Hello everyone. This is a demonstration of the dashboard created in Excel 2010 that Chris mentioned in the previous video. Here we have a view that was created in Excel 2010 with the Power Pivot add-in. As you can see, this is a very visual representation of the worldwide business, all the way at the top level summary view, but we're able to manipulate or drill this down to the manager and rep level. In this particular Excel dashboard, we're showing four different quadrants, each quadrant showing information that's pertinent to the business. The first, qu first quadrant, we're showing the waterfall view, and this is what Chris mentioned in the previous video, which we'll talk about a lot more in the next few minutes. The second view is the district performance view, and this is showing the district performance for each of the individual districts and how they're performing against each other. The third chart is showing the calendar view, and this is showing performance by quarter by month. And finally, in this last quadrant, we're showing an analysis of the upside. So we're looking at the upside and where it lies in the individual sales cycle so that we can correctly forecast what part of the upside will actually close. So let's go back to the waterfall view. In the waterfall view itself, we're looking at a bunch of different things. The first one is our overall worldwide quota. The second bar chart is actually showing what has closed and is in the bank. And then we have the deals that are called, the run rate, and then the gap, which is calculated by taking the quota minus all the deals that we expect to close. And the gap is what's missing for us to close our quota. Finally, from our CRM system, we're able to see what is classified as upside and not forecasted. And these are deals that were not originally forecasted, but are in the system and could potentially close. And we can look at the, the fourth chart here to see an analysis of what potentially will close later on. So first, the first thing that you might notice that is that in Excel 2010 and in Power Pivot, there are these concepts called slicers. Slicers can allow end users to quickly filter on any criteria quickly. We can look at this by the quarterly performance by slicing it to Q4. And as you notice, the individual charts all sliced to the Q4 data. So now we're looking at only data that is in Q4. And this applies to the calendar view and applies to all the different charts. We can also slice the regions. So as you can see, when we click on Americas, we're now looking at only the Americas information and we're looking at the district performance in the Americas, and these are the four districts that we belong to. We can, only, we can also filter by the ATU managers or the account managers, and in this case, we'll look at Chris Gray's numbers. In this situation, we'll notice that Chris has a large gap, and he doesn't have a lot of upside or non-forecasted deals to make up for this gap. So we know right away that there is something that we need to do, a, a plan of action to get Chris Gray back on track. On the other hand, if we look at Aaron, Aaron has an opposite um, circumstance. He actually has a negative gap. And because he has a negative gap and a lot of upside, he's in a very good position right now. And what we can do is we can then now analyze from his upside what has the most potential to close. And as we, as we can see in this particular example, most of his upside are in the 10 to 20 percent, so he still has some room to, to move these uh, upside deals more to the closed position. So from this view, we can also drill back up to the district level, to the regional level, and back to the worldwide level and looking at all the numbers for the entire year. Excel 2010 gives you that capabilities. The other aspect that you might be noticing from Excel is the performance gain. As we've been clicking through this dashboard, the performance has been quite fast. This is due to the Power Pivot add-in. So in the Power Pivot add-in, we're able to overcome a, a familiar limitation to Excel when it's handling large amounts of data sets. In this particular example, we're looking at thousands of rows. But in Power Pivot, we can actually handle millions upon hundreds of millions to billions of rows in memory. So there is a lot of performance gains. The other aspect of Excel 2010 is that this particular example allows us to connect to any amount of data sources in our corporate data warehouse. So we can connect to our ERPs, our CRM applications, and previously a limitation was that we can only connect to or limited to connect to SQL Server Analysis Services cubes. Now 
we can connect to pretty much any data source that you have within your corporate investment, IT investments, whether it be Oracle, Teradata, Sybase, DB2, or anything that has an OADB or ODBC connection. We can even connect to Atom feeds, um, and that will allow us to connect to anything that is an RSS feed that follows an Atom format. So in summary, Excel 2010 has allowed us, Microsoft, to make business intelligence capabilities a first-class citizen. No longer do your end users need to wait for IT to build a custom report. Within the familiarity of Excel, users can access virtually any amount of data sources from any different vendor, expose their views in memory for high performance, create slicers, and share that to your end users through the Excel client or through the managed environment of that SharePoint enables, where IT can still have the rigors of scalability, reliability, and security. Try the PowerPivot add-in today and Excel to 2010 today by going to www.powerpivot.com or to the Microsoft website, microsoft.com. Thank you for your time.